Hey yo, it's me, Carlos C. And I just wanted to come hang out, share something that was on my heart. You know, me and Adriana have always been ones people feel comfortable coming to when they feel discouraged, whenever they're feeling burned out, whenever they are feeling taken advantage of. And one thing that we noticed, there's an increase of people struggling with self-worth, feeling as if they're not loved feeling unmotivated, battling with depression, and some are struggling staying planted where God placed them. And that could be either in their church or in the relationship. And I do believe that there's a lot of factors that play into this, like what we're dealing with in the world right now and what we've had to deal with for the last year. Maybe someone really close to you, someone that you devoted your life to and spent so much time with, did something to lose your trust. Or maybe you just recently lost somebody that was really, really close to you. Maybe you just lost your job and now there is a financial burden on top of you and it's just left you with more stress than you feel you can deal with. And I know exactly how you feel. You're a shell on the inside empty, but on the outside, you carry a smile. If somebody was to see how you feel on the inside, maybe, just maybe, it would set you free. And slowly you feel yourself slip away. Your joy, your personality, your ability to hold conversation, finding the strength to just get out of bed in the morning, and your friends and family have absolutely no idea. And you are so quick to get angry. You severely injure people with your words because there is nothing more in the world that you want than to have someone feel the anger and sorrow that you feel on the inside. And I get it, you don't wanna to talk to anybody. You don't wanna have conversations with anyone because they're not gonna understand. And all people wanna do is give you some really horrible advice that they don't even live by. So recently I was reading and I came to a point where Jesus was crucified. He was taken out and his disciples were left with nothing. These men gave everything up, their families, their jobs, their careers to follow Jesus and he was taken out. And I wonder if they ever came to a point where they thought to themselves, now what? I have to go back home. I have to explain everything. I have to deal with the I told you so's. I give in everything up and I have nothing to show for it. One of the things I really love about Jesus is he's always on time. Jesus shows up, hangs out with them off and on for about 40 days. But I was reading in Acts 1, 4 and it says this. Once when he was eating with them, he commanded them, do not leave Jerusalem. Don't leave Humble Park. Don't leave Belmont Craig. Don't leave Logan Square until the Father sends you the gift he promised. As I told you before, John baptized with water, but in just a few days, you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. And I felt God stop me there. It was so heavy on my heart. It was so prevalent that people are moving nowadays without even considering the Holy Spirit. People are picking and choosing what they like and what they don't like, what they want to live by. I want to take this out of Christianity. I want to take this from culture because it makes me feel good. I got all the feels, but I'm going to spit out this here from Christianity because one, they don't want to be held accountable. Two, they don't want to submit to anything and they don't want to commit to anything. It made me stop in my tracks to ask myself, who is the Holy Spirit. You know, the Holy Spirit is our comforter. He gives us discernment in all situations. He is the greatest gift that we can ever have. And this is why Jesus said, don't move a muscle until you get the gift that will give you the strength to move on when you have no strength. When everybody tries to label you something, man, he is so lazy. He is already damaged. They're already alcoholic. That person slept around with everybody. That person has a temperament. That person's slow. The Holy Spirit reminds you what your purpose is. He always reminds me what my value is. I'm telling you, there is times where I just sit and life just beats me up. It's one thing after another after another. And I have to be honest, sometimes I start to listen and it starts to creep in. But that's when the Holy Spirit comes back and reminds me of who I am and what my purpose is. The Holy Spirit will show you the gifts and talents that you have inside you, that you were born with to make you into a better person. I believe that the disciples thought to themselves, I can do it. I saw him do it. I lived with him. I watched 
the formula. I think I can figure this out. But Jesus knew if he was to send them out the way they were, the minute that they were made fun of, the minute they were beat up, the minute that their pride was hurt, they would turn away and say, I'm not equipped for such a task as this. That's where you and the Holy Spirit picks up. And one of the most important jobs of the Holy Spirit is to light up your path, to always show you the way back to Jesus when you feel like you're lost and you traveled way too far away from him. But Carlos, you have no idea how many altar calls I've been to. And I keep coming back to the way that I'm feeling right now. Galatians 6, 7 says, do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. A man reaps what he sows. And if I can translate that, it would say, don't play yourself. God's not going to take the rap for this one because what you invest is going to determine what you see in your life. I have seen people give spot on word to other people in church. I'm talking about this is going to happen in this time. God wants you to know that this is going to happen and it's come to pass. And those exact people aren't even in the church anymore. As a matter of fact, they've stepped away from what they believe. And it's because they didn't see the same value they did before in the relationship they had with the Holy Spirit. Galatians 5, 16, read it with me, says, So I say, let the Holy Spirit guide your life. Then you won't be doing what your sinful nature craves. The sinful nature wants to do evil, which is just the opposite of what the Spirit wants. And the Spirit gives us desire that are the opposite of what sinful nature desires. These two forces are constantly fighting each other, so you are not free to carry out your good intentions. I want you to think of your mind as territory and every single day that you wake up, there are two, three, four, five forces always trying to take over that territory. If it's relationships, if it's sinful nature, if it's our own desire in the Holy Spirit, but only one can reside there at once. It is our choice. The thing about our choices, if we have to put any type of effort into it, we really don't want to make that choice. If we have to inconvenience ourselves to be better, I might as well just stay where I am. But the way that I am is drawing everybody to be far away from me. So I have to adopt this concept that I don't need them. I can do this on my own. And the deeper and deeper I get into this rabbit hole, the lonelier, lonelier I get. Then you get to a point in your life where you start thinking, why am I alive? I wonder if everybody would be better off without me. I should take my own life. Carlos, you don't get it. I've been saved forever. I already have the Holy Spirit. I remember the day clearly as if it was yesterday. Paul writes to a church that burns in my soul when I read it because sometimes listening to a lot of these conversations, this is my exact prayer. It's in Ephesians 1:17, and it says, I keep asking that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you may know him better. I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you, the riches of his glorious inheritance in his holy people. My prayer for a lot of you is God, give them the wisdom and open their eyes, open their heart to see how valuable they are, how much potential they have, and how dangerous they are to the kingdom of hell. Somehow, some way, you were separated. And God's been knocking on your door saying it's time to come back, but you pushed away everybody you knew associated to the faith. And even if you did come back, you know that the circle of friends that you have right now would never accept or understand the choice that you would make. I believe you have a decision to make and that's either you're going to crawl and scrape and suffer to the finish line or you can call on the Holy Spirit and tell him you're ready to come home. 
I hope that you found value in this video. If you did, give me a thumbs up. And if that's you, and you said, Carlos, you've checked off every single box of what I've been thinking and feeling for the last couple of months, then we really wanna have a conversation with you. You can always DM us and reach out. We love these conversations. And until next time, peace.